Hey there, how are you doing? Charlie Winters here with horse racing tips for Thursday the 22nd of August. Well, we got the first winner, the nap of the day, JM Jungle won at 10 to 1, tipped at 17 to 2. Unfortunately, we only got one horse placed with it. Some of the others did actually run quite well. It's just unfortunate they didn't come in the placings. Robert Johnson ran a cracker. What, what happened once was with that horse? It's a two to two and a half mile horse. It was in the perfect position. However, it was squeezed for room once it turned into the straight. Shuffled back. It did stay on again. Shuffled back. Um, unfortunately, two two and a half mile horses uh, that get shuffled back around York aren't suddenly going to like come sprinting to the forefront of um, of any field. Um, so it did stay on again. I was quite encouraged by it. Um, the other horse was Waco. Was it Waco Kid or Waco Boy? It came fourth, paying first three, 50 to one. Uh, so unfortunately, it was, a, it was an unplaced horse for us, but it ran an absolute cracker. It ran exactly how we thought it would, it would do. Unfortunately, not enough runners ran below par. And um, yeah, it was a losing day. Um, £1.82 back, I think, um, from £10.50 stake. So what I've gone for for Thursday is I've gone for two 10 pence each way lucky 15s. It, 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 they're the same, same four horses. I've had a 10 pence each way lucky 15 and I've took all the prices. Then I've had a 10 pence each way lucky 15 and then I've left all the prices. I've also had 50p each way singles on all four horses and I have staked £10 exactly. So let's get into it. So once again, they are big prices, but it's a wide open um, card at York, as you can imagine. So let me get into it. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a close up because I ain't got my glasses on. I don't wear glasses, but I just, I bought some off Amazon. So I can't see a thing. So the first selection is diligently at 33 to 1 in the 225 at York, paying, <clears throat> paying six places instead of three. This horse has been quite steady. Um, it's been running some quite competitive small field handicaps and you always have to be careful of Clive Cox with his sprinters especially when the sire is Harry Angel um, I do believe it is one of those horses that could be kept out towards the back and uh, will, will finish fast and might just sneak a place I think it could well be bigger than 33s but I've been known to be wrong in the past but I do believe there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of progressive horses, but there's also a lot of question marks with unproven horses. And I think diligently, um, although it's got plenty to find, could run well. The next selection is a horse I backed recently at York, and um, it's dropped even further in the handicap. And the horse is Austrian Theory. At 22 to 1, in the 3 o'clock at York, in the Clipper handicap, paying 6 places instead of 4. It's trained by Tim Easterby, ridden by Duran Fentiman. It used to be trained by Charlie Johnston. Um, it's got some decent form. It beat Dutch Decoy on good to firm ground. I think rated 91. I think it's rated 83 now. If this horse, if, if Tim Easterby wants this horse to go very close, it is handicapped to run extremely well. If um, if I asked Tim Easterby if what was the target, and the, he said the target was this race, I'd be extremely strong because... This horse has got a handicap mark where it's ready to win. However, there are big races coming up in, in the not too distant future between now and um, well, the Cambridgeshire or the, the the Big Air meeting. But I do believe this could be the race for it. It ran in this, I think it, I think it ran in this race last year. But even if it didn't, that regardless, um, it ran a cracker at York not long ago. And I was moaning about it being tenderly handled because it ended up finishing out the places in the end, I think. Um, just um, dobbing us for I think it was about 20s that day well I think it's got every chance and I think it does prefer quicker ground which it'll definitely get at York tomorrow what I will say as well is also Bo Pedro is in that race and I've been back in Bo Pedro for I don't know how long so if you fancy Bo Pedro I wouldn't put you off however I do believe Bo Pedro could potentially be going for the Cambridgeshire having, having come third in it last year and um very well handicapped, so it's much lower. So, I think Bo Pedro. It would. It would. I would normally. In fact, if I'd got three, I would. The Bo Pedro and Austrian Theory would definitely be two that I would include, and probably another one of the David O'Meara horses. But um, as I said, I'm sticking with Austrian Austrian Theory. The third selection is Cassim, 
in the 4.45 at York, paying six places instead of four. Trained by Carl Burke, I think has got every chance. Um, I won't know until I've looked at the fourth horse, but between this horse and the fourth horse, one of them has actually um, ran uh, behind, I don't think it was this horse, but one of them ran behind um, the, I think it was Richard Firehorse that won today, the Alcel Marley, or whatever we were called. I'm losing track big time. Let me go on to the next horse. So the next horse is, yeah, so, yes it is. So it's it's Kasim at 14 to 1 in the 4.45 at York, paying six places instead of four. So two runs ago, it finished behind one of the winners that ra that won at um, York yesterday. I'm guessing it's out of Sands of Marley. Um, it's It's got a very, I think it's called Yes I Am Marley or Yes I Am Marley. So uh, that horse won at York yesterday. This horse finished a close second behind it at Weatherby. Um, that was two runs ago. It's won since. Um, and I think it's got a chance. And the final selection is Rock Melody at 25 to 1 in the 5.20 at York, paying six places instead of four. It's a Jim Goldie horse. It's been higher rated in the past. Very dangerous. It showed a huge improvement last time. Hopefully it does the same again. If it does the same again, it's going to be extremely dangerous. And it's pretty much the outsider of the lot. It's got Joanna Mason on board and she doesn't ride very often for Jim Goldie. So I think it's very interesting. Um, another horse that I will say, I, I don't quite get what's going off because on Skybet, they haven't even listed the Linkfield meeting yet. I don't know if it's an error or not, but I've clicked on, um, I've clicked, just give me one second. So what I'm doing, I'm looking for, um, so here we go, let's go to, I know you can't see what very well at the moment, but I, I, I shall show you in a second. So tomorrow there's a meeting at Lingfield and it's um, on the all weather, the 4.20, so I've been following this horse for a while now and it's coast and I've been waiting for it to run at Lingfield and I'm probably going to back it each way. This isn't going to be the nap of all naps like I would have fancied it. Because I think the race is quite competitive for this horse. However, the first and second favourites are massive squiggles against them because it's a typical Gary and Josh more trained horse where it can turn up at Lingfield and win with its head in its chest because it's been messed around and it's well handicapped but is tomorrow going to be the day I don't know but Coast for definite will go straight to the front and it could be quite hard to peg back however I'm not getting the, the, the best vibes for this race because I'm not a fan of Mikel Mortensen even though he has won on this horse but this horse has got a ridiculously good hand um, good strike rate at Lingfield, so it's definitely one to be uh, wary of. Coast is so I probably will be back in it small each way. If I've had a decent return off uh, the York, I should probably have a, an okay bet on it, but it isn't the nap that I would have liked to have um, announced to everybody. It's still one to keep an eye on, and um, yeah, it needs to go straight to the front and ideally get an easy lead. And it normally kicks around the bend and is actually very. It looks like it's out on its feet sometimes, but it just keeps going. But normally against horses in classified races where they are rated around 50. So I'll leave you with that one. But definitely the four in the lucky 15 are definitely horses that I really like the look of. But bear in mind, they're probably going to be, they're probably going to come on place because they are huge prices. And I'm not, that isn't like a disclaimer. I do fancy the horses, but it's very tough, very competitive and um, the big prices. So the bookmakers are expecting them to come nowhere, but I expect them to run much better than the book is forecast. So if you can give me a like or a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, or give me a comment. Tell me you don't fancy any of selections. Tell me what you fancy. So I really appreciate it. Looking forward to Red Car. So hopefully there's a bit of rain at Red Car. I don't think there's gonna, I think there's gonna be showers Friday morning. So the very best of luck, Charlie Winters over and out. Cheers, mate.